Hello everyone, it is Mr. Spinelli, and today we're going to talk about L'Hopital's Rule. Now, L'Hopital's Rule states that if we have two differentiable functions on a particular interval, and they may not be differentiable at a particular point, and that point here is going to be C, if the limit of the quotient of those two functions is 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, then, then, the limit of that quotient is equal to the limit of the derivatives of those two functions. Now note we're not using the so-called quotient rule. We're not doing low d high minus high d low over low squared. We are just doing the derivative of the top function and the derivative of the bottom function. L'Hopital's rule states that if we get one of these two indeterminate forms, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, then we can just take the limit of the derivatives of the top and bottom functions. I think it's best explained if we take a look at a few examples. Now here's one that you've done several times before. You would probably factor the top into x plus 4, x minus 4. Go ahead and write that for you. which then allows you to simplify to just x plus 4. So then this one is technically equal to the limit as x goes to 4 of x plus 4, which is just 4 plus 4 equals 8. You could do that without L'Hopital's rule. But let's talk about what you get if you do L'Hopital's rule. So if I take the limit as x goes to 4 of x squared minus 16, well, I get 4 squared minus 16 is 0. And if I take the limit as x goes to 4 of x minus 4, which is my denominator, I also get 0. So in this case, my limit goes to 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. You type this in your calculator, it doesn't know what happens. So what L'Hopital's rule says is that I can take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom, and then compute the limit of that. Derivative of the top is 2x. Derivative of the bottom is 1. Now I can plug in 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 divided by 1 is 8. And I get the same result that I'd gotten if I did factoring. Now the key thing is L'Hopital is going to come in handy when I'm not able to factor. Let's take a look at another example. So this one classic limit as x goes to infinity. Most of you know that this is going to go to 4 over negative 3. But let's take a look with L'Hopital. So if I plug in, plug in, air quotes, infinity, both of these functions go to infinity. So I get the in indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So I'm allowed to use L'Hopital. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is 8x minus 5. I'm going to take the derivative of the bottom, which is negative 6x. Now you'll notice again, if I take the limit as x goes to infinity of my numerator, I get positive infinity. If I take the limit as x goes to infinity of the numerator, negative 6x, I get negative infinity. So I get an indeterminate form of positive infinity over negative infinity. That is an indeterminate form, so I'm again allowed to apply L'Hopital a second time. So then I've got the limit as x goes to infinity. Take the derivative of the top, I get 8. Derivative of the bottom, I get negative 6. So then plug in infinity, air quotes again, plug in infinity. I don't even have to because there are no x's, so I simply get negative 4 thirds, which is the reduced version of 8 over negative 6. So these are two that you could have done your old school way. I would have factored out um, a 1 over x squared for each of these, and I would have been left with my answer of negative 4 thirds right away. Um, but I wanted to show you L'Hopital. So now let's take a look at two that you had to memorize, and we made you memorize these because we hadn't yet taught you L'Hopital. So this first one, if I take the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x, well, I just get 0. And if I take the limit as x goes to 0 of x, I again get 0. So I get an indeterminate form of 0 over 0. 
Well, L'Hopital says that I can take the derivative of the top and bottom respectively. So derivative of sine x in that numerator, I get cosine of x. Derivative of that denominator x, I get 1. Now what happens when I plug in 0 into cosine? I get 1. So I end up with 1 over 1. Oops. Which is just 1. And that's the thing we told you to memorize. Take a look at this bottom one. Limit as x goes to 0. Well, if I plug in 0, I get 1 minus 1, which is 0. I again get 0 over 0. So taking the derivative of the numerator, derivative of cosine is negative sine, but there's that additional negative in front of the cosine. So I'm going to get positive sine of x over derivative of x is just 1. Now I plug in 0, sine of 0 is 0, and I get a 1 on the bottom. 0 over 1 is actually equal to 0. Some people tend to say that that's infinity, they make a mistake, but when you have 0 in the numerator and any number besides 0 in the denominator, the result is 0. So these are two formulas that you memorized early on. And now you can show why they are the way they are because of L'Hopital's rule. Now let's get into some more fun. Limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x squared. Well, I know that e to the x, let's remind ourselves what it looks like. It's an exponential. Gets increasingly large as we go to the right. x squared, it's a parabola. Increasingly large as we go to the right. So this is an, of the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. So L'Hopital's rule says that I can take the derivative of the top the numerator. Well, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Derivative of x squared is 2x. I notice again that this goes to infinity over infinity. So I've got to apply L'Hopital's rule again. So limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over 2. Well, as e to the x goes to infinity, this function goes to infinity. So the limit is infinity. Um, some people will see these problems and know that e to the x is never going to go away, if you will, as you take the derivative. So a fun property to test out is maybe try this as a homework. What is the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x over x to the n, where n is greater than or equal to 1? I invite you to explore this problem. And you may find out something interesting, or you may know exactly what I'm trying to have you think. Let's take a look at another one. Now, many of you would probably look at this and go, oh, I know the bottom factors into x plus 4 over x minus 4, which means if I plug a negative 4 in, I know I'm going to get a 0. Excellent observation. So the limit as we go to negative 4 of the denominator is 0. Well, what is sine of negative 4 pi? Well, that's just two rotations in the opposite direction of what we're used to going, so clockwise, which is also zero. So this is of the indeterminate form, zero over zero. So I can apply L'Hopital. Um, you may see some people write L apostrophe H. You may see some people write out L'Hopital's rule. They may write something along those lines. I maybe should have been doing that early on to show you that I'm allowed to apply that because I have this indeterminate form. So applying L'Hopital, I take the derivative of the numerator, which would be pi cosine of pi x. Derivative of the denominator would just be 2x. So now if I plug negative 4 in, I get pi times the cosine of negative 4 pi over 2 times negative 4. So I'm going to get a negative 8 in the bottom, and I'm going to get negative 4 pi just to think out loud of where that is well that tells me to go there's negative 2 pi there's negative 4 pi so negative 4 pi lives over here so I get just pi on top so I end up with negative pi over 8 again I took the derivative of the numerator took the derivative of the denominator evaluated at negative 4 as long as I get a constant, I am good to go. If I get a 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, some indeterminate form, then I have to apply L'Hopital. 
So here's another one. Natural log of 3x over x squared limit as we go to infinity. Well, recall that ln of x or ln of 3x is going to look something like this. That is the inverse of an exponential. And x squared we know is a parabola. So as I go to infinity, both of these functions go to infinity. So we're of the indeterminate form infinity over infinity. So I can apply L'Hopital and I get the limit as x goes to infinity. Derivative of ln of 3x. Well, that's going to be the 3x goes in the denominator and its derivative 3 goes in the numerator. And that's all over 2x. Now some people this gets a little fuzzy and we struggle with our fractions, but I can really write 2x over 1. And so I can rewrite this division of two fractions is really just multiplication of reciprocals. So this is really 3 over 3x times 1 over 2x, which means I have the limit as x goes to infinity of 3 over 6x squared. And yes, I could have done some simplifying to note that this part here is really just 1 over x. And as x goes to infinity, my denominator becomes increasingly large. So as I divide by a number that is astronomically large, this limit will tend to 0. So again, I'm getting infinity in the denominator. When I divide by a very large number that approaches infinity, I will tend to 0. Another one. This one's just a mess. Plug in 0, sine of 0, 0. That polynomial 7x squared minus 2x is also 0. Same with the two polynomials on bottom. Um, we'll have x squared, which is 0 when evaluated. x is 0. So I get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form, which means I can apply L'Hopital. Take the derivative. So this is just a practice of, do you remember all your rules of derivatives? So I get 2 cosine of 2x plus 14x minus 2. Now down on bottom is kind of a pain because I'm making you do the product rule. So I get 2x times x plus 1 squared plus 2x squared times x plus 1. So that was chain rule. Derivative of x plus 1 squared would be 2 times x plus 1 to the first times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. So that's where that 2 came from. Now I plug in 0. Let's see what I get. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I get 2 minus 2 on top. And on bottom, well, I've got x's everywhere in front. Right? x is everywhere in front. So I'm going to get a big old 0. So I end up with a 0 over 0, which is another indeterminate form, which means I can apply L'Hopital. Before I do that, I'm going to simplify that denominator. So that denominator is really, does it worth doing? Let's see here, I'd have x plus 1 times 2x squared plus 2x plus 2x squared. So this is all just rewriting that denominator. So that denominator is really x plus 1 times 4x squared plus 2x. This could be helpful later on. So now I'm going to apply L'Hopital. So I've got the limit as x goes to 0. Of derivative of 2 cosine of 2x is negative 4 sine of 2x. Derivative of 14x is 14. Derivative of that constant negative 2 is 0. Now I've got to take the derivative of this as my new numerator. So I'm going to just take the derivative of the first, which is 1. So I've got 4x squared plus 2x plus x plus 1 times derivative of 4x squared plus 2x would be 8x plus 2. All right now I'm going to evaluate when x is 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so I'm going to get 14 in the numerator. And on bottom, I'm going to get, well, it looks like this portion here is going to be 0. This portion here will be 1. And this portion here will be 2. So I'm going to get 0 plus 1 times 2, which gives me just a 2 in the denominator. So I should get 7. Now I might have made a little arithmetic mistake. Hopefully not. Hopefully you get the gist. 
if I get an indeterminate form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, I take the derivative of top and bottom respectively and then see if I get a number or another indeterminate form. All right, next one. Limit as x goes to negative infinity. We've got an x squared on top, e to the one of e to the one minus x on bottom. As I go to negative infinity, the top goes to infinity, and the bottom is basically like e to the x as it goes to infinity, which also goes to infinity. So another indeterminate form, I can apply L'Hopital. So I've got limit as x goes to negative infinity of 2x negative e to the 1 minus x. So that's chain rule. Derivative of e to the something is e to that same thing times the derivative of its exponent. Take the limit again. I'm going to get another infinity over infinity. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital once more. Generally speaking, you're going to take a you're going to apply L'Hopital until that polynomial function goes down to a constant, which in this case now I've got a two on top, and then I've got e to the one minus x on bottom. So this tends towards an infinity in the denominator, which means this goes to zero. Okay. So hopefully at this point you've got the gist, and now you're just sticking along to practice and check your work. So obviously you should pause these, you try them before I do them. So I did not intend to give you this one. We're going to skip it, and I will invite you to figure out why. And if you're not sure why I'm skipping it, send me an email. All right, this one's a classic. You know the answer is 7 over 23. Let's see why. So if I plug in 0, this is going to be a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, so I'm going to apply L'Hopital. So limit as x goes to 0 of derivative of the top would be 7 cosine of 7x from chain rule, and then 23 cosine of 23x, which then just gives me 7 over 23 because cosine of 0 is 1. All right, next one, very similar. Sine of 6 pi is going to be 0. And ln of, in the denominator, you'd have ln of 1, which is 0. So I get a 0 over 0. Apply L'Hopital. Take the derivative of the numerator. And I get pi cosine of pi x. Take the derivative of the denominator. And I get 1 over x minus 5. Evaluate at 6. Cosine of 6 pi is just 1. So I get pi in the denominator, and I get 1 over 1 in the, de sorry, pi in the numerator. 1 over 1 in the denominator just gives me 1, so my final result is pi. And last one for good measure. This one is just a little trick that you may or may not see very frequently. If I plug in 0, I get sine of 0 is 0. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I get 1 over 0, which is an infinite. So that's an interesting conundrum we get. And technically it goes to, it's, it's undefined if you remember what cosecant looks like. Um, but this isn't an indeterminate form. Recall, my indeterminate forms that I've been discussing this entire time are 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. And obviously with a plus or minus concept over here. So what I need to do is rewrite it so that I get it to look like one of those. So recall from your pre-calc class or your trig, wherever you learned trig identities, you probably very frequently, the first thing you did was change everything into sines and cosines. Well, I can do that here. I rewrite it like this. Now I have a form that is 0 over 0. I apply L'Hopital, take the derivative of the numerator and denominator respectively, and I get 2 cosine of 2x and cosine of x, evaluate at 0, and I get 2 over 1 or 2, which you would have seen right here at the beginning. But I just wanted to show you that sometimes limits will not always be in an indeterminate form, so you have to do some clever algebra to get it to look like those. Um, so thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.